The Washington Wizards were the early season success story of the NBA. Before the Cleveland Cavaliers, before the Memphis Grizzlies, they were the media talk about. They were the team that was surprising everyone across the NBA. Unfortunately, that has changed in a very drastic way. The Washington Wizards now sit in the 12 seed, falling very drastically from the one seed, now sitting at 23 and 27, having lost six in a row and set a game outside of the playing games. With Spencer Dinwiddie having rumors now that he is not getting along well with teammates and his teammates don't want him there, throw alongside the fact that he has not performed well, and those rumors could be causing some problems. And also now the fact that it seems like, although it's not a foregone conclusion that Bradley Beal is going to be leaving the Washington Wizards, there does seem to be some doubt now that he actually might consider leaving the Washington Wizards, and there's no guarantee he's going to be staying around long term either. So let's talk about what's been going on with the Washington Wizards. And let's talk about what they have moving forward, what changes or decisions they need to make with this roster. Let's start with Bradley Beal. He's the core to what the Wizards have been doing for a long time now. Either he was the second man to John Wall or he's been the guy. And he's still playing at a borderline all-star level this year. He probably won't get the nod, in my opinion. And he hasn't played as well as he has over the last couple of seasons, but he's still been fine, averaging a bit over 23 points per game. He has struggled a lot from deep this season. Uh, and he's had moments a bit more recently where he's been a little bit better than he was earlier on in the year. But it's one of his worst scoring seasons over the last few years, no doubt about it. Uh, from an efficiency standpoint, from a production standpoint, that's just the way it is. Mainly because of his three-point shooting, which is unfortunate because that's always been what he's lied his cap on. Even when he came into the league offensively, he didn't do a ton else other than three-point shooting at a great level. But he was always a very good three-point shooter. Hopefully that picks up uh, because the Wizards or whoever else gets Bradley Beal is going to need it. Kyle Kuzma has been solid this year. I have liked what I've seen from him. He's taken a nice step forward, especially over the last month or so. Uh, he had flashes early on, but I feel like he's been more consistent as of late, which is what I've wanted to see from him. And so kudos to him. He's done well in a new situation that he was looking forward to. And then I guess the next piece of the big three, if you want to classify a big three in Washington, would be Spencer Dinwiddie. And he, I know, coming off of injury, I've talked about him earlier on in the year. I wanted to give him time to get comfortable, uh, to work his way back from injury. But we're 41 games now into him being back from injury and about 50 games into the season. And it's just, it hasn't happened for him yet. It just hasn't happened. He's still only averaging 13 points per game. Uh, assist numbers are fine. He's playmaking okay. Uh, but even then, some of his decision making is still a little bit questionable from time to time. Fill that in with his very poor efficiency from the field, from mid range, at the rim, from deep, you name it. He just hasn't really looked comfortable with the Wizards. I don't know if it's him returning from injury and he hasn't found a stride yet, or if it is truly a fit with the Wizards, a fit with his teammates, and things just aren't working there. And the Wizards and Spencer Dinwiddie themselves both need a change. But either way, something ain't working with Spencer Dinwiddie in Washington. That is for sure. But in terms of other problems for Washington, I think they're one of a few teams in the league right now that is kind of suffering from having too much depth. They have too many guys that they have to give minutes to that it's tough to find their rotations. It's tough to make everyone happy, to give everyone the ball enough, to give everyone enough minutes. Because if you're talking about regular rotational minutes guys on this team, Bradley Beal, Kuzma, Dinwiddie, Harrell, KCP, Evdia, Gafford, Neto, Kispert, Rui, Aaron Holiday, Davis Bertans, Thomas Bryant. There is a lot of quality NBA rotational players on this team. And now that Thomas Bryant is back, now that Rui Hachimura is back, they have to figure out a lot of minutes, or not enough minutes realistically, to a lot of guys. And that's not helping. Like, Daniel Gafford has been their starting center for 45 games this year. Then all of a sudden, they decide to start Thomas Bryan after a few games back off of the bench, and they just didn't put Gafford in the rotation. At all. On the first game that Bryan started. Then, in the second game last night, he, uh, he came in off the bench, played a few minutes, and you know what? Washington made a bit of a run in those minutes, and they, uh, they actually looked better defensively because... Yeah, Daniel Gafford should probably be playing. But that's the problem, is they have so many guys right now they are trying to get minutes to. Thomas Bryant back from injury. Young guy they've invested a first-round pick into. They want to see how he looks post-injury to see if they want to commit money to him. 
but they've already committed money to Daniel Gafford, so they've kind of already locked down that center spot. So what are they doing with Thomas Bryant? They need to figure that out. Montres Harrell, sure, maybe not a long-term piece, but he's been valuable to you this year as well. Now he's been a lot worse over the last month and month and a half than he was early on in the year when he was looking like he was going to be a six-man-of-the-year candidate. But nonetheless, you still have to give him minutes. He is a valuable, impactful piece to your team. Throw in the fact that you also have Rui Hachimura, who has now come back from injury, alongside other wings like Denny Avdia, who, although offensively has not taken the steps forward you would want yet, has been very good defensively. Devis Bertans is there making a ton of money, but still can't make a shot, which is what he's there to do. Washington need to figure out who they want to keep and who they don't want to keep. Because depth in the NBA is great. I advocate for depth. Teams that have good depth, especially in a regular season like this year, where you are struggling with injuries and people being in and out of protocols, usually is a good thing. But that's only if you have a coach that can manage those minutes, manage the rotations, manage that many egos, and keep everyone happy, and build that chemistry within those units. If you can do that, depth is great. If you can't do that, uh, depth can be to your detriment. And I think that's part of what's going on here in Washington right now. Chemistry with some of these units just aren't great. Of course, now with reincorporating Thomas Bryan and Rui Hachimura, that is going to be part of the... That's just part for the course. But it doesn't necessarily make the situation any better. It's not like they had amazing chemistry before those guys were leaving, other than at the start of the year when things look good. But they got to figure out who they want to build around, ultimately. Spencer Dinwiddie, is he a long-term piece, or do they move him at the deadline? The biggest question, though, is what happens with Bradley Beal. That ultimately is what decides the most in Washington. Does he want to return? Great. If he does, you need to bring him back. But if not, then you really have to start making decisions about moving forward. Because at that point, you're probably not building a roster to say, hey, let's go and make the playoffs next year. At that point, you're probably looking at this roster and saying, hey, okay, who do we want on our team to start winning two or three years down the road? That's the type of questions Washington needs to start asking themselves, depending on what Bradley Beal does. If Bradley Beal stays, they need to ask, who do we want around Beal for the next two to three years? Do we want Kuzma? Do we want Spencer? Does Spencer and Bradley not get along well? So do we move Spencer and get another point guard? Uh, is Gafford or Thomas Bryant our center of the future, or are one of them going to be a backup, or are we going to bring in a backup center? Those are the types of questions Washington need to start asking themselves, and I think are important questions because they're things that are hurting the success of this team right now and are going to be crucial to the success of this team moving forward. On the flip side of things, if Bradley Beal does end up requesting a trade or get traded at the deadline or ends up leaving in free agency, you need to start asking, who do we want on this team two to three years down the road? Montrezl Harrell, probably not a guy we want long-term. He's not going to be a long-term solution to the next era of Washington Wizards basketball. Kyle Kuzma, he's only 26, is a fine player. Maybe we want him as a complimentary wing piece. Uh, KCP, fine player, still only 28. Maybe we want him as a solid 3 and D wing for a while. Uh, Rui Hachimura, still a young piece. Do we want to commit to him? Thomas Bryan, do we want to commit to him or do we want to go with Gafford? Those are the types of questions that Washington have to start answering those are some of the questions I wouldn't mind some of you Washington Wizards fans answering down in the comment section below. But the Wizards have to make some decisions here. They have to evaluate their talent. And they have to recognize that this current group isn't getting it done. I don't necessarily think they need to add a ton of pieces to be a playoff team, but I think they need to figure out who they want to commit to on this roster and who they don't want to. Because right now they have too many pieces who can't all be happy. And ultimately, that is not going to help your chemistry. That is not going to help your morale. Eagles are going to get inflated. Eagles are going to get frustrated. And guys are going to end up wanting to do things to earn more minutes on a basketball court and not necessarily just make the winning play. And that can be dangerous. And ultimately, that's something the Washington Wizards front office, in turn with figuring out what Bradley Beal is going to do, is what they need to figure out. That is my thoughts on the Washington Wizards right now and what they need to do moving forward. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.